congruence of triangles. In this module, you will learn about the idea of congruence in plane figures, line segments, angles and triangles. Let us observe these objects. If you place the second object on the top of first, they would match perfectly. Such objects are said to be congruent. Here the two coins are said to be congruent as they have same shape and same size. Also, the two blades have same size and shape. Hence they are called as congruent. In geometry, two figures or objects are congruent if they have the same shape and size or if one has the same shape and size as the mirror image of the other. The relation of two objects being congruent is called congruence. The idea of congruence is applicable to both two-dimensional and three-dimensional shapes. Let us learn them in details. See these plane figures. Can you say whether they are congruent? Let us check by using the method of superposition. Trace a copy of one of them and place it over other. Or cut out one of them and place it over other. If they cover each other completely, they are said to be congruent. Here we can see that figure 1 is congruent to figure 2. Therefore, it can be written as figure 1 congruent to figure 2. And the symbol for congruence is Look at these two pairs of line segments. Let us check whether they are congruent by using the same method of tracing and superposition. Copy CD and place on AB. You will see that CD completely covers AB with point C on point A and point D on point B. Hence, the line segments are said to be congruent. It can be written as line segment AB is congruent to line segment CD. Let us check for another pair. If we trace RS on PQ, you will notice that the end points do not coincide. Therefore, line segment PQ is not congruent to line segment RS. Hence, we notice that from both pairs of line segment, line segment AB matched with CD, as they had same length while PQ and RS did not. So, if two line segments have the same, that is equal length, they are congruent. Also, if two line segments are congruent, they have the same length. Let us now see idea of congruence in angles. Observe the four angles. Trace angle PQR on angle ABC. For this, place Q on B and QP along ray BA. We observe that angle PQR matches exactly with angle ABC. So we can write it as angle ABC is congruent to angle PQR. Also, measurement of angle ABC is equal to the measurement of angle PQR. Now let us trace the other two angles. We notice that angle LMN do not cover angle ABC exactly. Therefore, they are not congruent because their measurement is different. While angle XYZ overlap on ABC. Though its rays are longer, but both angles are said to be congruent as rays in figure only indicate direction and not length. Therefore, we can write as angle ABC is congruent to angle XYZ and measure of angle ABC is equal to measure of angle XYZ. If two angles have the same measure, they are congruent. Also, if two angles are congruent, their measures are same. As we learnt about the congruence of line segments and angles, if they combine to form a triangle, will the triangle be said to be congruent? Let's learn it now. Two triangles are said to be congruent if one of them is a copy of the other. Also, when superposed, they cover each other exactly. 
Here triangle ABC and triangle PQR have same shape and same size. As if we trace triangle PQR on triangle ABC, it exactly covers triangle ABC such that P coincides with A, Q coincides with B, R coincides with C, also line segment PQ coincides with line segment AB. Line segment QR coincide with line segment BC and line segment PR coincide with line segment AC. That is, the correspondence of A to B, B to Q and C to R and correspondence of ABC to PQR is a congruence relationship. Therefore, we can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PQR. It can be written as so, for any two triangles to be congruent, their corresponding parts should also be equal. Thus, in these two congruent triangles, we have equal corresponding parts as Now, is it necessary to know all the measures of angles and sides of both triangles to state whether they are congruent or not? The answer is no. By using some congruence criterion, we can verify the congruency of triangle by knowing measures of only three parts of triangle. Let us learn them in details. The first criterion is SSS, that is side, side, side criterion. It states that if under a given correspondence, the three sides of one triangle are equal to the three corresponding sides of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Example, for given triangle ABC and triangle PQR, their sides are given as follows. We see that side AB is equal to PQ, side BC is equal to side QR, and side AC is equal to side PR. Hence, by SSS criterion, triangle ABC is said to be congruent to PQR. Now, do you think AAA criterion will also be useful to prove congruency of triangle? No. As if all angles of a one triangle are equal to other, it is not necessary that their sides will also be equal. You can see this in the example. Therefore, there is no such AAA criterion to prove congruence. The second criterion is SAS, that is, side angle side criterion. It states that if under a correspondence, two sides and the angle included between them of a triangle are equal to two corresponding sides and the angle included between them of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Example, for given triangle ABC and triangle PQR, we see that side AB is equal to side PQ, angle B is equal to angle Q and side BC is equal to side QR. Therefore, by SAS criterion, we can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PQR as two corresponding sides and their included angles are congruent. The third criterion is ASA, that is, angle side angle criterion. It states that if under a correspondence, two angles and the included side of a triangle are equal to two corresponding angles and the included side of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Example. For given triangle ABC and triangle PQR, here angle A is equal to angle P, side AB is equal to side PQ, and angle B is equal to angle Q. Therefore, by applying ASA criterion, we can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PQR as two corresponding angles and included sides of both triangles are congruent. 
The fourth criterion is AAS, that is Angle Angle Side Criterion. It states that if under a correspondence two angles and the non included side of a triangle are equal to two corresponding angles and the non included side of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Example For given triangle ABC and triangle PQR, here angle A is equal to angle P, angle B is equal to angle Q, and the side AC is equal to side PR. Therefore, by applying AAS criterion, we can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PQR, as two corresponding angles and a non-including side of both triangles are congruent. The fifth criterion is RHS, that is, right angle hypotenuse side. It states that, if under a correspondence, the hypotenuse and one side of a right angle triangle are respectively equal to the hypotenuse and one side of another right angle triangle. Then, the triangles are congruent. Example, in right angle triangle ABC and right angle triangle PQR, angle B and angle Q are right angles. Hypotenuse AC is equal to hypotenuse PR and side BC is equal to side QR. Therefore, by applying RHS criterion, we can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PQR as corresponding right angle, hypotenuse and one side of both triangles are equal. Thus, by applying these criterions to any two triangles, you can verify the congruency between them by just knowing any three measures only. Let us summarize all we learnt in this module on congruence of triangles.